Hello and welcome everybody to the Writing Gals. It's coming up to Halloween so we thought that we'd have a really fun episode today and talk all about paranormal fiction. But before we get into that let's catch up and see what everyone's been up to. So let's go up here, look here at the very cool looking Michelle and see what you've been up to this week. Um, I've been getting ready for Halloween, so today was perfect. I didn't realize until about 10 minutes ago, I'm going to have to go to the school uh, pickup line like this when we're <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So that will be fun. Um, I've been gearing up to publish an episode of my vampire story this weekend, and I'm like, oh, wow. Like, uh, the pressure's on because it's Halloween, right? I I'm going to yeah. have to, like... I haven't gotten to where anybody's like feeding on a victim yet, like drinking mm. blood. And I'm like, I think I'm going to have to make that happen since it's Halloween, right? Oh, absolutely. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing. Not nearly enough writing this week, but um, when you have your husband's birthday, your anniversary and Halloween all in the same week, you know, Oof. things get that a little bit. Is a lot. That that's is a lot. That is a lot. It sounds like you've been super productive and mad respect to you for actually being able to do makeup look that looks super cool for this. Even yeah, with all fun. the stuff you've got going on. <laughs> Victory, well, how's your week been? Oh, I was going to say, luckily we had an extra hour than we thought we had. Remember, Laura? Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of these days we're going to get it right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Uh, my week's been great. I've been finishing up on my dummies book that I'm rewriting um, and almost done with that. I've got one last chapter to tweak and then I can send it off to the editor and that part portion of it is off my plate. And then there'll be, I'm sure, rewrites and, and um, editing and stuff to do. But that part will be done. And I'm so excited about that. And I, I have been diving back into my rom-com that I never finished that I promised readers that I would finish. So I'm trying to get that done before I start on my second book, my second paranormal book, which everybody is wanting me to work on too. So no pressure. And exciting. No pressure. Yes. Oh, you're doing a lot of different things at the same yes. time. Kind of crazy. That's, uh, sometimes that's great when your brain is like, doesn't want to just focus on one thing. And then other times it's that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That is a lot. AGL says, love the makeup. I remember last week you said you would do dress up. So, yes, we've got Victorine, who is a Star Trek character. Are you a specific Star Trek character? No. Or just a member just of the a team? Star Trek officer. <laughs> <laughs> and Michelle, what are you? I'm a vampire. Oh, yes. Got it. I didn't know if you were like... And it crying blood or something. It's clearly like... starting to disagree with my complexion. Oh no. This <laughs> diet of mine. So. <laughs> and then I just went for like a romantic smoky eye and a bold lippy. Yeah. Because I want I you know, like this like the mermaid look, right? Yes. That's, right. that's what I'm going for here. Um, which doesn't really go with my background, does it? Should have gone for the ocean or something. <laughs> you're, like, you're you're like a I don't know, Celtic mermaid. Yeah. Which I've actually read yeah. some. They have a uh, selkies, <laughs> right? In, is that Ireland or Scotland? Oh my goodness! Somebody's gonna be mad at me when, that I don't know. It might be Scotland. But I've read like selkie mermaid um, romances. Oh, nice! So cool. you kind of like in the Highlands there. I don't know. What I'm talking them. about. <laughs> We're just gonna I, I love it. I love it. If you hear dog <laughs> bark today, then it's my hellhounds. And if you hear the roofers across the street, it's just somebody <laughs> like nailing down the coffin in my lair here. So <laughs> everything's covered. <laughs> I love it. We've got sound effects and everything. That's right. <laughs> um, this week, my um, hardcover version of my book, Married to a Pirate, came. And look how cool it looked. Wait, I can't see. Oh, yeah. No. Stupid background. It it, the binding is so good. Wait, let me put it in front of here. Like, oh, it's nice. actually really good quality. So you know how I wasn't sure if Amazon's, um, like, quality was going to be very good for the hardcover. So I, I haven't done it before. But with this book, I was like, I'm just going to go out and I'm going to do everything. So I've got a special edition that has the jacket. And nice. then it's got, like, character art underneath the jacket. 
um, still waiting for Ingram to approve that. And then I thought, well, I know a lot of people hate the jacket, so I can do just like a normal hardcover on Amazon. And it came and it's like, I'm really happy. So guys, if, you, if you're not sure about doing a hardcover, like it's another thing that you could just sell on your Amazon page and the quality yeah. is really good. So I'm really impressed. Um, and yeah, so th this week has just been more of the same. I released actually another book. So my co-written book, Heart of Glass, which is a Cinderella slash Son of Hades, Enemies to Lovers kind of romance. Uh, it came out as book six of our fairy tale series. Nice. Um, and that's that's been really cool. So I, I don't know about you guys, but when I launch a book, I'm an emotional wreck. Like... And I decided to launch two in the same month. <laughs> I solved that by not launching books anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I need to try that. I need to try. Just no, you don't. Emotional wreck. I feel like a new mum. <laughs> every, yeah. every time a review comes in and it's like your book is ugly, I'm like. <laughs> Whereas oh. now with like my older books, I couldn't care less. But it's like literally every review, I feel it right now. Mm, yes. <laughs> So that's all that's going on with me. Um, I'm really excited about this conversation because I feel we've all this year been really diving into paranormal and paranormal romance. So um, I know that we probably have so much to discuss. You guys, if you're watching us and you want to ask any questions on the topic, just put them in the comments and we'll do our best to get to them. We really like questions. It stops me from rambling. <laughs> keeps me focused <laughs> and make sure we say what you want us to say so exactly exactly you don't want to hear me just talking about hair no one <laughs> does anyone want to just do like a wrap-up of what paranormal paranormal like the genre is or do you want me to just literally read what wikipedia says <laughs> i think you need to read it from wikipedia in your british accent yes All right. <laughs> That's oh, funny. And before right. you do that, I'm going to go get my charger that my computer is charged. Go for oh. it. All right. It says paranormal romance is a subgenre of both romantic fiction and speculative fiction. Paranormal romance focuses on romantic love and includes elements beyond the range of scientific explanation, blending together themes from the speculative fiction genres of fantasy, science fiction, and horror. Paranormal romance may range from traditional category romances, such as those published by Harlequin, Mills and Boone, with a paranormal setting to stories where the main emphasis is on a science fiction or fantasy based plot with a romantic subplot included. Common hallmarks are romantic relationships between humans and vampires, shapeshifters, ghosts or other entities of a fantastic or otherworldly nature. Love How it. was that? That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Explained it really well. <clears throat> I think as well in um, paranormal romance, it's kind of sometimes it's kind of like gothic. So you've got like that, like it's, I feel like it's darker. Like you can have sweet paranormal, but I feel like the, the, the general genre seems to be darker. And I think that's what has drawn me and a lot of other authors to write in that genre right now just because the world is harder to deal with <laughs> so right? I was writing romantic comedy no problem and now my my funny well has dried up and I, I'm really struggling and so it's like I want to escape into the fantasy realms and to go into those like deeper richer darker themes that you could get in a uh, paranormal romance I'm excited but so Victorine, your ghost story, no, not ghost, your angel story seems very light. So how have you <laughs> approached it and how have you so, done yes. it? How have you done it? So, so I'm mashing up rom-com with paranormal, which has been really interesting and super fun. And I get a lot of comments of people saying, I haven't really read anything like this. <laughs> that's cool which is really cool but it is really bad for marketing because <laughs> i can't piggyback on anybody because nobody's writing something like super light-hearted sassy funny and still with angels and demons and stuff so <laughs> i mean that is so I'm cool <laughs> paving the way for something new i guess <laughs> 
I was really excited to write paranormal because um, I wanted to have actual villains mm. and I wanted to be able to have a broader plot than just the romance. Oh, yes. Yes. I agree. Like, I love the romance, obviously, because that's all I've written for the last 10 years. Um, but I wanted it to have like a more solid foundation. And I, you, as we all know, I struggle with conflict. And so mm -hmm. like I have an, I can have another element of conflict in there yeah. besides their relationship to play off of. Right. So like the forbidden love, like all the forces against them, like all that kind of extra um, like external conflict that is yeah. a lot harder to come up with in romance. So, yes. And I thought it was interesting that on the Wikipedia obviously anyone can write on wikipedia so this isn't gospel <laughs> but it said that typically the romance in paranormal romance is the subplot mm -hmm. of the of the story and and certainly so i've done two wolf shifters and then i have one with mermaids and pirates and stuff like that and that's true like the romance is kind of a subplot there's a lot more of like an adventure mystery kind of plot going on there but I think that's very common in fantasy I think it's very interesting you have sci-fi in it the only thing I can think of is maybe Dracula is that would you think it's like oh oh not just Dracula um Frankenstein Frankenstein Shelley what's her face <laughs> what's her face Mary oh, Shelley. Laura yes that's it <laughs> um doesn't Frankenstein's monster fall in love with the woman but it's unrequited love. I haven't read the book. In the movies I've seen, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I've read the book, but I think I was very young when I read it and I don't remember very much mm -hmm. other than um, being scared. <laughs> well, and so there's, there's this element of the romance that you can determine what proportion it's going to be. Like, even if it's a subplot, for me, I would say mine's almost 50 50 or like 50 149 you know like so I want a lot of romance in there yeah. and then a lot of paranormal I've read that's not marketed as paranormal romance it might be just like a sliver of the um story you know 10 20 mm percent -hmm. of it or something um but man I'm there for it you know when they <laughs> finally do bring that romance into it I'm I'm all about that um <laughs> so it just makes it even if you look at it as paranormal plot first or like whatever your world plot is and the romance secondary um it's always better if the romance plot is part of the main plot right it's not just its own little separate thing right because mm -hmm. otherwise it just gets kind of boring and the stakes aren't very high so I always try and make sure that the two plots are very intermingled and dependent on each other when I'm writing them. I'd say that like I've read, written a lot of them, but um, I've outlined and planned a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I am. Um, oh, I'm really into it at the up. moment. Are you? Is Michelle like looking terrifying for any of you? <laughs> <laughs> Michelle's face like glitched properly. And I was like, yes. Am I seeing things? Is this only me? <laughs> like, this is just so on brand. <laughs> I'm like, plot twist. Michelle That's is scary. <laughs> It's done on purpose for Halloween. Are you guys still there? <laughs> yeah, we're still yeah. here. We, you are still with us in the spirit, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's just a little bit of a internet issue. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Technical difficulties. <laughs> it's all good. You know, it's really cool because here in, here in England, um, for me growing up, if someone said that there was like a paranormal movie, right? That was parent. I was thinking of the movies Paranormal Activity. Like, <laughs> so for a long time, I thought paranormal was like terrifying and all about like, I was like, when. so when I first heard about paranormal romance, I thought, oh my goodness, is that like 
someone is trying to do an exorcism and then they like fall in love with the bad spirit <laughs> I was like is there some like weird I mean maybe there's a book out there that's like that <laughs> oh, oh Michelle your sound is going stuck. crazy sorry maybe if you let's just mute you come out and come <laughs> and then, back in maybe yeah. that'll help Turn it off and turn it on again, right? Works yeah, most that, of the time. that always helps, right? <laughs> when things go wrong. So, um, Victorine, do you have any tips for someone who's just maybe thinking about writing in this area to get started? To get started. Oh, my goodness. I would say definitely read some paranormal romances to get started. Um try and like you said if you if your vision of paranormal is just from that one horror movie you watch then <laughs> yeah. you may be writing in a little slightly different genre than <laughs> what everybody else is wanting so i would definitely read some paranormal romance um and get the feel for them but like you said mm -hmm. they're a little bit darker they're a little bit more angsty and mm -hmm. um the ones that i've read the paranormal part is definitely the um main genre and then the romance is more of a mm -hmm. sub genre i think mm -hmm. it just naturally happens that way most most books naturally just have that romance mm -hmm. as more of a sub genre just because there's so much you can do with a plot with a mm -hmm. paranormal book right and yes. so you dive into those um cool paranormal things and mm -hmm. the, the romance just naturally kind of takes a back seat to it it's true. And and certainly in the Wolf Shifter romances that Jesse Cal and I wrote, um, one was a Little Red Riding Hood retelling that was mixed with Robin Hood. So in our world, Red Riding Hood and Robin Hood are cousins. And Will Scarlet is his best friend. And she's secretly in love with Will Scarlet. But Will Scarlet is a wolf uh. who was there that the day that her grandmother died. So there's this, did he kill grandmother? And she's also a wolf hunter. She's trying to get rid of the big bad wolf and get revenge. And then discovers that the guy that she's in love with is a wolf. Is wolf. But the cool yeah. thing with the, the, the wolf shifters is, you know there's enemies like not everybody loves wolves so then yeah. there's stakes there there's usually a lot of conflict about you know whether people are safe or not um and usually secrecy you know i think about twilight and how 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 did bella keep it secret that she was simultaneously seeing a wolf shifter and a vampire <laughs> for right. years and charlie never knew <laughs> he never had an inkling <laughs> i mean that's impressive <laughs> I love but, it. yeah you can have a lot of fun with this genre for sure can you what can you combine does it always have to be so like i'm asking like questions if nobody knows about this right can you have where you have multiple types of paranormal elements in your story or is it best when you're starting out to keep it simple and just stick with vampires for example oh i think you can definitely combine them um mm -hmm. shapeshifters and vampires go really well together but i've seen other combinations as well so mm -hmm. i think if you're going to um write paranormal i would i would explore different ways to twist it right because maybe um maybe in your world there are you know other there's witches and vampires and mm -hmm. shapeshifters all of them mm -hmm. i think they all can go together really well yeah i think it's just important to um so we can make up the rules in fantasy but we need to stay within the rules that we make <laughs> yeah exactly. and, and sometimes i think i think it's really handy to you know, they talk about a series Bible. I think it's really useful to do that for this genre. If you create like a magical world <laughs> and you've yeah. got witches, um, what can they do? What can't they do? And, uh, and, and then there's like alliances and politics. So like how do, so in Twilight, vampires and wolves are enemies, maybe yes. in another person series. They are allies and they both hate fairies. Right. <laughs> well, any, yeah. Anyone would hate fairies. 
<laughs> Maybe I should have said sirens. There you <laughs> go. Like, no one hates fairies. <laughs> oh, it could be bad fairies, good fairies. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Jesse and I got into this mess because we, um, I'm the one that does all of the mythological fo folklore um like all of the that kind of thing because that that's what I studied at school is what Ooh, I just like cool. was obsessive over and um elves and are part of fairies the fairy world of folklore and then there's all these different types of fairies like pixies and they all do different things <laughs> so we were that's like cool. we had Tinkerbell because of um our Peter Pan and Captain Hook and Little Mermaid retelling um so we had Tinkerbell who's a pixie and then we had the elves in one other book that were like all-knowing wise elves kind of like the elves from Lord of the Rings mm. um and then there was um fairies in this hidden forest where there were elemental so there was like Fire fairy, wind fairy, earth fairy, you know, the elements, I suppose. And they all did different things. And I didn't write down everything that everyone did and where they lived. And it was a nightmare. So that was a really oh, long-winded no. way of saying, <laughs> write it down if you've yes. got, you know, even if you think, oh, it's fine. I've got fairies. I know what I'm doing. You could have six different fairies. <laughs> right. And they don't right. all like each other. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I have found Plotter really helpful for me for keeping my oh. series straight, putting all the information into Plotter. Um, I don't know. I found that super helpful. So mm -hmm. if, if you um, have played around with Plotter, that to me has been helpful to help me keep all my characters straight and all my mm -hmm. plot straight. That's a really good tip. I have Plotter, but I, I opened it and went, ah! and then I, <laughs> I closed it and never opened it again. But oh my goodness, it can help me with that. Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Yes. And, and it's really nice because I like Plotter because it's customizable and you can mm -hmm. use it how it feels right to you to use it. Right. And so okay. I use it backwards. I write my chapter and then I go into Plotter and mm -hmm. Um, say what I just I plot out what I just wrote mm -hmm. um, so you don't always have to use it in advance for plotting mm -hmm. um, I use it to keep things straight in my mind mm -hmm. hey Michelle's back welcome back I've had to switch over to my phone oh, oh yeah no. that's really cool actually yeah it looks cool yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you look scary <laughs> <laughs> um, you came in at just a good time I say that I was going to say what we're going to say next and it's gone because I was looking at your background and then your makeup. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone is asking, what is plotter? Oh, well, they, they put plotter question mark. Yep. It's that's exactly what I'm talking about. P-L-O-T-T-R. And mm -hmm. that's a program you can purchase that will help you. Yeah. It's based cloud based. Is it a subscription model or is it just? Yeah. A, OK, so you can cancel any time and yep. oh, OK can be helpful yeah oh, i'll have to I give really it another go it um one thing i want us to talk about is how having a paranormal element to your book can um intensify like the romance oh. because the last book that we wrote okay so he's a son of hades and he's like a god and he has these extra abilities. And one of them is that all of his senses are heightened, kind of like a, a wolf shifter romance, right? Mm -hmm. And so then um, that was really fun because he was able to hear her from a really like lot you know from really far away he could hear a heartbeat quickening so she couldn't hide the fact that she had a crush on him or you know he could smell her and smell the elements around him and I think that's really cool that with these paranormal beings we can amplify those five senses and make everything more rich which helps with the world building which yes. is why I wanted to talk about Michelle, did you have any top tips when people are trying to build a world in their paranormal romance? Well, in paranormal, you're typically not making up um, characters that are a being that is too unfamiliar with people, like or a brand new one. That's usually more the realm of fantasy. Um, but you have to be familiar with what the 
accepted sort of mythology surrounding type of being is know what people are expecting and then find a way to add your own flavor or your own twist to it um mm-hmm. you can't do anything like too crazy i mean the the arguments over the twilight vampires still rage and how long ago was that book published like a long time ago um, is it because they were sparkly because i can't get over the fact they were sparkly <laughs> Um, they're just too um but yeah i mean there's there's certain characteristics of every type of creature that you can play around with um and then there's some that people really expect or want to have um with vampires it's really tricky for me because so much of vampire mythology doesn't make sense to our modern medical knowledge <laughs> does that make sense so i have i've had mm-hmm. to I am squaring what I know about the human body and biology and what vampire lore is. For mm-hmm. example, drinking blood as a vampire, like, wouldn't they just digest it and poop it out? You know, that kind of thing. Like, it just doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> so, you kind of just I know. Um, Michelle. <laughs> I'm sorry, but how can you get so caught up on that and be like <laughs> a man turning into a wolf and then turning into a human? Totally fine. Vampires. <laughs> oh no, they can't drink blood because that wouldn't be possible. <laughs> <laughs> like for real. For real. Like to me, I just want to know, okay, what happens to his body when he <laughs> Is it like going into his vein that makes him alive again? But how does it get into his vein? You know, like, <laughs> he's dead? In this, in, you know, because they're called, like, the living dead or the half dead or what? It, what <laughs> I feel like the half dead most of the time. I know. And, uh-huh. and you would drink caffeine to help, right? And it goes yeah. your veins. But blood can't just go straight into your veins. <laughs> blood. I mean, not. That's still how's it get from your stomach? Okay. Anyway, just do what I'm saying. And then, like, with werewolves, like, what happens to their clothing? Oh, don't even get me started. <laughs> me, start. me and Jesse Cow, when we were writing our wolf shift of romance, we were like, okay, okay. So it was like, like our first one that we'd ever written. <laughs> we were like, what do we do? What do we do about his clothes? Like, there's this guy <laughs> running around the woods and he's naked. <laughs> so, so we would have things like he's stripped down. Um, and took it and like folds his clothes up and hides them under a bush so that he could like come back to them. But then I was like, that just is so silly. We kept it in because we're like, what else do you do? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Like, okay, he just suddenly has clothes on again. Yeah. <laughs> and I ran into the same yeah. thing with mermaids because my mermaids yes. and out of the water. Yes. Right? Came out of yes. the water. You know, there is so much nudity in my pirate romance that if it was made into a movie, I'd be like, These mermaids are going to need long hair, <laughs> just really <laughs> long hair, and, and the camera needs to be here. And, <laughs> and with angels, you will always wonder, Okay, well, what happens with their wings? Mm-hmm. You know, you always have yeah. to do with wings all the time. So, yes, Don, I. <laughs> That is definitely something that I have had to consider. Yes. Consider. <laughs> Even though I <laughs> Because you have because you're world building, so you're like, okay, so is, is can vampires have children or can they not have children? Or are they only Apparently, replen- according to Edward Cullen, they can. <laughs> well, but and see, then she had to create her rules where it came up with this new kind of creature, right? Oh, that's and, true. And like in my world, they have to create them. And so, yeah. In fact, in my world, it's a virus. Oh, but I haven't revealed that yet. So, spoiler warning too late. Spoiler warning. <laughs> a vampire virus. I like it. Get it. It's well, it's something that I wanted to them to be able to cure by the end of the book. 
Oh, cool. That's like my plot is that the characters want their want to get their lives back again. Oh. And so I had to make it something that was curable. And so not necessarily a virus, but you know, I had to take all yes. that into consideration. So that's what's yeah. in world building is you really have to know what your lore is, what the yes. rules of your lore are, and mm-hmm. are to accept it or are there gonna be things that they're like just silly mm-hmm. or that me out of the story because that's not what I'm used to or yes you know, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. So yeah and um a tip that I was learning recently I mean it's I think a lot a lot of what we do when we write is intuitive. We kind of know this stuff, but this is just like vocalizing, I guess. Like, oh, you know, it's also super helpful when you're doing paranormal to think about the elements and like the weather and like where is, you know, where's the setting, you know, you, it's, unless it's like um, a YA fiction novel, you wouldn't normally have your paranormal romance to be like, at camp (laughs) it's normally like in an isolated um location or it could be um a totally different world you know fantasy world um I think yeah like the whole the setting the mood the the everything like there's so much more to paranormal than just like plonking a werewolf into a contemporary romance Mm -hmm. um and I think sometimes when people go, oh, I, oh, uh, wolf shifter romance is trending right now. I'm going to write a wolf shifter romance. They, they forget that there's like these other elements, the story that that's what readers are looking for. Um, So maybe we can just talk a bit about like, what are the reader expectations of the genre? Do you think? Well, when you say paranormal, so it's like not, the normal but it's close to our normal life it's kind of like jumping off or living side by side with normal life so i always Mm -hmm. think it's important to have like the readers feel like this could be real real world stuff this could be Mm -hmm. a world stuff or if it's historical paranormal it could be like you know normal Mm -hmm. historical Mm -hmm. then oh but like if you look in the shadows or if you wander down the wrong alley or open the wrong door, you're going to discover this whole new world that you didn't know exists. And that's, that's mm-hmm. the thing that readers want to feel is that almost like this could be real life if I wandered mm-hmm. down the wrong road, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. So that yeah. spraying into this other world that exists with our own that we just think might be possible, but we don't really see it all the time. Yeah. So, like with my vampire romance, it starts out in the real world and then she's taken away to the school where then she Mm -hmm. this whole new, you know, group of what used to be humans living and with their world domination plans and their (laughs) feeling of school runaways and foster girls to themselves. And, you know, so for me, I went and I found okay, I want this to be set off somewhere where they could actually have a secret that the rest of the world doesn't know about. Where can I do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A really rural, I based it off of an actual state park in Kentucky where heavily forested. I have pictures and roadmaps and how far it is to different big cities. I found um, an old building, like an old mansion that was, had at one point, like a school for girls like a boarding school for girls, like in the 1800s before it was down was let rot. And I was just like, well, one of my vampires is going to come in and buy this old school and revitalize it. And I have to think about the subterranean, like basement underworld things that they would develop there. Cause all my vampires are going to be nocturnal. And how do you do that in a school? Unless they have all these availability uh, all these rooms and passageways and things available, you know, all the time. So, you know, there's just like all that fun stuff, but um, I still want to, I don't want to just leave my readers there in this. Cause then it starts to feel like that's all that exists in the world. 
So my plan for the second book is to take them back out into the real world again. And like one of the things is that they need this constant source of blood. And so they've got all these connections with coroners in town because I found out, you know, I looked into how coroners drain blood out of bodies. And if you get the corpse fast enough, you could have the coroners um, with a special pipe attached to the drain on their tables where they could drain it straight to like a sanitary bucket instead of down into the sewers where it normally we go. And then they could do business with the vampires, you know? So it's just like all these fun things where you can bring, keep bringing the reader back into the real world and let them know like, this could, this could really happen. This could be true. You just don't know about it. Mm. Yeah. It reminds me of once upon a time, how it goes into the fairy tale world and then it goes to storybook and then it goes to oh no before that it is in new york like it, it, it constantly reminds you like oh look like this is our world like this could be happening mm-hmm. mm. what do you think uh victory like victory when you were writing your angel romance what work did you have to put into building that that world i mean you must have i mean on my mind is boggled and i have to read it is it is it published yet Yes, yes, it just oh, came I have out. To read it. I have so to read I'm really it. excited to because share. Because how? How did you write an angel romance? Like I, I just need to know well, all the details. <laughs> it's super fun to just kind of imagine what the spirit realm is like, right? Mm -hmm. And so my book takes place in the spirit realm, in oh, between. Oh. I call it the in between, in between what we would say is earth life and heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is where the whole book takes place. And in my world world you can choose to be an angel or you can choose to be a ghost and it's based on whether you believe in heaven or not right ah. and so if you if you don't believe in heaven then you're a ghost and if you believe in heaven then you can be an angel and be a guardian angel and be given assignments and ah. and stuff like this and there's technology in the in the other realm where they can see the future of people and and so they can stop calamities from happening to people and things like this and so it's this it's this world that I can build however I want it to be and I can give yeah. them whatever I want to have them to have in order for them to be able to do this job of being a guardian angel and mm -hmm. and all of this fun stuff but the problem in my world is there is somebody who is trying to um, take over the in-between realm and it is a fallen angel who is trying to um, become the god of that world or the the oh. ruler of the in-between and so things start going wrong and their technology oh. doesn't always work because this this um guy is trying to um take over and so that's the fun I part love about it. That. <laughs> that is so cool. I'm done here i can't hear you michelle sorry could you say that again don asked a question awesome where is it this one they need to be introduced to the new world oh it was the other one oh, but we can do, do you that feel one first. oh okay no we we can do this that's fine um do you feel there needs to be a conflict between real world and the fictional world they can be and there's benefits to doing that because it adds a lot of tension to your book and it can add extra plot lines i've seen it done without though um so I think it's really up to you. What do you guys think? Well, what what is your main um, conflict going to be um, mm -hmm. that makes you have a reason for having this other world, right? Why is it? Why are they just not part of the normal world? Or maybe they are in your paranormal. Maybe they've taken over already and they're just like part of the normal world. But in that case, people usually get into like... Um, are there social issues between the different classes of creatures and humans and all this sort of stuff? So it always influences it. If I if if it's not directly like the main conflict of the book, it it's always heavily influencing the main conflict of the book because otherwise, like, what? How how do we have a resonant story for people who live in the real world, right? Um, 
So like in mine, there's a faction of the vampires that do want to take more control, more power over the human world and stop living in, in secrecy. And then there's the other faction that actually wants to just, you know, fix it all and for them to not be vampires anymore. And that way they could just go and live in the human world. But they're, they're in conflict with each other because if they're regular humans, they won't have any special powers that would make it possible for them to, you know, gain control over, you know, governments and that sort of thing. So like every paranormal romance that I can think of, it usually builds. So in the first book, you just start to grasp the immediate world that the reader is introduced to and like a few characters, a little glimpse into um, what the paranormal world that they've, that they exist in is just hints and then you broaden it out in, in coming books where you see more of the world, more of the conflict. You can see that in Twilight too, yeah. for example, as yeah. a book which is everybody's kind of used to. And so there's mm -hmm. going to be like the smaller conflicts like in Twilight where she's going to school and she starts to see that the Collins are living this secret life and they're always worried about like being caught and then they'd have to move and go somewhere else and like protecting... Mm -hmm humans from vampires that wander through and all these like just these little kind of fringe conflicts but then the overarching conflict comes into place when you get to see the broader world and we all have opinions about how she handled that great battle when it was supposed to happen but that's generally how a series of paranormal of a paranormal story would go is this broadening of awareness and conflict um, between the paranormal creatures and the human world yeah, and I think that's why commonly paranormal fiction is longer than other genres because there's so much world building. And I think my top advice is with book one is just slow it all down and take your time building the world and introducing your characters. Um, my series, so my pirate book I've released is, is going to be a big, 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 long series. Um and the first one is just about um, this woman falling in love with a pirate, right? But then it just, all it's done is introduce, oh, we have sirens in this world. And there's an Egyptian goddess, Isis, who used to be married to Lord Poseidon, the god of the sea. And they're divorced and they're the parents of all the sirens. And then there's the, um, I don't know the name for the male mermaids. I, I don't even, because there's not in greek mythology male sirens <laughs> they're all female but in my world there's going to be some males um and then like with each book it gets bigger and bigger and bigger because i want to introduce and incorporate more greek mythology norse mythology egyptian mythology and this idea that i don't see a lot of people because a lot of people will stick in their lanes they'll do like greek mythology or norse mythology or stick with one thing mine is this idea that all of these gods if they just married each other that's like incest so if they like knew like an egyptian one and a norse one like then it's like they're marrying outside their family but they don't all get on so there's like divorce and drama and all sorts of stuff now if i was going to put all of that in one book it would be overwhelming so there's an element of i think like you were saying michelle like you've you've got to put so much thought into the world building but you don't necessarily write it all down you've just got to have it in your head so you know okay I know this is going to happen or I know that there's this rule and you know stick with your own laws that you lay down because we can play we could be playful and make our own worlds but if we start breaking our own rules then we're going to lose the respect of our reader and and I think the number one thing is we do not want our readers to be pulled out of the book and go mm -hmm. huh that's something wrong yeah. here <laughs> so yeah. that's that's another question I have for you guys how do you ground the reader? How do you convince the reader that what you're telling them, this illusion that you're creating is, is happening, it's real, that they, they forget about everything they know and they just live the story? We have to own it. You know what I mean? So we're, all, we're just making stuff up. But you have to, the more 
concrete details you can give. And like you said, the more you can stay consistent to what you lay out and give them, the more mm -hmm. they'll accept these really crazy things. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like, if you just hem and haw and don't really give a lot of details, then, you know, they, they don't really feel like it could really happen, but mm -hmm. for, I, I guess I have this tendency to really mix science with magic or fantasy um, because my mermaid series, um, they have to, they have to breed with humans because they're evolving in more and more fish like qualities. Right. Mm -hmm. So they, they are um, from the same mythology that Poseidon, they're like mm -hmm. Poseidon's children kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but because the gods have kind of retreated into their own world and left the mermaids mm -hmm. or the mer people to their own devices, mm -hmm. then they've been only like interbreeding with each other for centuries to where now they are becoming more adapted to the water. Right. And so they're yeah. developing these fish like qualities. And so there's starting to be this war among my mer people of people who have different philosophies on which way they should be going. And some think that they should just evolve how they're going to. And others who think, no, no, we have to preserve our humanity. So we have to keep breeding with humans, but they can only do it mostly like forcibly. <laughs> so it's like this, like you, you just add these morals, these moral questions mm. to it as well, but like very specific mm. things. So like I, when I describe some of my mermaids that are more evolved they have, I describe their specific features, like the fact that their hair comes out all the time because they, they're, they don't need hair <laughs> as fish. And so like, it's a desirable quality to, for some of them to have hair, but they're like, either it falls out or they just don't have very much. So they're always trying to like grab like seaweed or bits of rope they find and try and like, <laughs> you know, add to their hair so that it looks fuller than it really is. And then they like, you know, try and do all these. So I just add like all these really neat little concrete details that mm -hmm. bring it to life. Yeah. And I'm not just like telling the reader, oh, they look more like fish. Mm -hmm. I'm showing them how and showing them how that impacts these creatures. And what does it mean politically? What does it mean um, morally? What, you know, just mm -hmm. all of those things are what make it feel real because nothing in our lives exists on its own. It impacts all these other aspects of our lives. And so that's why world building is so hard and so important is that you have to really stop and think, okay, if I'm going to make my werewolves like grow clothes every time they shift back into human form, like mm -hmm. what does that mean as far as like my magic and my lore system? Because mm -hmm. if it just happens with no explanation, then that's when readers really go like, I don't believe this. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> but then the Incredible Hulk did that for a very long time. Yeah. Because um, my my brother made my mum laugh because he was really little and he said, Where did his shorts like where did his shorts go? Why did they come back? <laughs> and then when he changed, he'd be like, I don't understand. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We have a question. We have two actually. Right. How about free prequel as a reader magnet to explain various bits of information? Is that for like, um, yeah, for a reader magnet? I've I think seen that's a great idea. Do this. Yeah, I've seen, yeah, certainly maybe not a prequel. Like, I mean, you could do prequel, but you could even like J.K. Rowling did a couple of really tiny books before like Harry Potter exploded when I was really little there was like a really skinny um fantastic beast and where to find find them um mm -hmm. and it was just talking about the different animals and and creatures in her world and gave them a name and what they liked just a little bit of and I know also I've seen James Blatch do this in his book like at the end of the book oh and Mark Dawson does this too where like at the end of the book it says oh if you'd like um to join my mailing list you can get like a document that gives you a little bit more information like even even things yeah. like just an index with like all of the names of things and then and then 
you know, I'm just saying that if you don't want to write a whole prequel, you could even get away with just because they've read your whole book by this point. They they would probably sign up to your mailing list just to get like a scene. I I do bonus epilogues, for example, which you could do. Um, you and also- I guess that's a way you can build super fans, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say, you can do the same thing on, like, a Patreon or, you mm. know, that, all this extra content. Yeah. And that's one of the, yeah. the definite bonus points of writing paranormal. Like, we can't do that yeah. in contemporary romance. <laughs> Very right. easy. Yeah. Not easily. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely. Do all that fun stuff. Yes, definitely. And also, are there clicks between the mer people? Yeah, there's a lot of infighting. So they're the yeah. people, the mermaids that don't look very human hate the ones that look like human but secretly want to be like them. It's very high school. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I just, I love that dynamic <laughs> of, like, them just hating them for, like, looking like the beauty queen. But at the same time, they want, all they want is to be like that themselves. And so there is a lot of, like, hate between that. And then I also have, like, there's how many different oceans on the planet and they're Seven? All, yeah so what well, and and just all these different like um lagoons and like different mm-hmm. like things like that but i wanted to think about okay well if my mermaids are evolving they would evolve different ways in different places so like yeah. in my second book i'm wanting them they're going on like this quest for this purpose of the plot and they're going to end up in the arctic ocean and see what the the mermaids in the arctic cold waters how they would have evolved differently than the ones in the more tropical waters where the story mm-hmm. began so but they don't get along and there can be like wars and clashes but yeah it's so much fun when you and when you start adding all those details i mean look how much more fun you can have yes with your character world and your conflict when you start really delving into those things yeah your story gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It might, it might, we're in book six of the Fairy Tales Reimagined series, and Jesse and I, our books keep getting longer. Yeah. And we wanted to just write short, fast read, Disney inspired princess books. And it ended up being like this big, massive, overarching story <laughs> that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So, how um, much I, fun I think, are you having? So it much is fun. A blast. It is an absolute blast. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I love it. Um, does anyone, just super quick, if you have a question, you better type fast because we're nearly finished with time. But, Victorine, do you have any final advice or thoughts on this? So my advice is um, to dive deep into your world. And if for some reason you have something in your world that is a plot hole or something like that, don't try and cover it up. Just shine a light on it and uh, just let people know that this is why this is. Um, And because it's much better to shine a light on it rather than to, you know, try and cover it up and, and, um, and sometimes as an author, you can even put a little joke in your book about it, you know, because because readers appreciate that. If you if you mm-hmm. have something in your world that just is obviously not going to work, like we talked about circulation and, and stuff, you know, just shine a light on it, make a joke out of it and move on. Um, so that's my advice. Yeah. And then give yourself credit. You'll figure out things that you like your brain will connect things and come up with ideas to solve your plot holes. Yeah. And and sometimes it's, it's the plot holes that open up like really great, fascinating ideas sometimes. And mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, that just be constantly like surveying and thinking ahead. And that's hard for me as a mm-hmm. pantser <laughs> to think ahead of what might be coming. But, um, and you also need to kind of think about, um, where your like what your villains are doing we, we've had podcasts before just on villains themselves but like villains are a very important part of paranormal romance um mm-hmm. even if you don't have like a villain villain you need to have like darker morally gray aspects to your characters and make them kind of like anti-heroes or something like that because you know you, you there has to be suspense in a paranormal mm-hmm. right Like, it's not just about conflict and that kind of suspense, but, like, I feel like life-threatening kind of suspense is a necessary part of paranormal romance. So. That is true. 
we all love a protector. We love an alpha male that is going to protect us, but might also kill us. <laughs> you don't know which way it's going to go. <laughs> my my poor daughter has like second degree burns on her right now. Oh. Um, she spilled boiling water on her chest and she looks like a zombie right now. Oh. I just thought, and the, like, it, we're both, luckily she's kind of laughing about it too. She's like, mom, I don't, I'm not even going to have to do much like, makeup for my zombie costume if I do that this Halloween is but um I brought I bring it up because like seeing things in real life can really give you like concrete details and experiences um one time my sister completely like you hear about people passing out when they see blood but like when my sister when it actually happened to my sister like it was crazy to see somebody go that color of gray and black, uh, you know yeah. what i mean and and to have like she, my brother had cut his foot and she just was gone and so you know just anytime anything that seems like gory or gruesome or mm. you know something like that creepy um like make notes of it because that's all stuff that you can use because what, mm -hmm. what paranormal works so well is that it's so close to real life for us, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you write fantasy and you're making up completely new creatures, then mm -hmm. you have to work so hard to kind of make them at all human so that you can relate to them. But paranormal creatures are so close to humans that it's easy for us mm -hmm. to relate to them. And that's what makes them so compelling. And so try really hard to make them feel as human and real but still creepy spooky not quite right like dangerous threatening all those kinds of mm -hmm. things so pay attention to the things that make them or like people or situations or experiences feel like oh shivery you know absolutely i loved all of that um, and also I'm in a, I'm in a real, I love dark fantasy, paranormal romance, fantasy, anything like that, fantasy. So get writing guys, just for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I want to read it all. Um, and yeah, it's super trendy at the moment. So if, if people are like, if you guys are like, oh, I feel like, you know, doing a wild card and writing something new, you know, give it, give it a go. Like, even if it's just for fun, sometimes it's good to get you. We've got NaNoWriMo coming up, right? So maybe your, your book that you do in November, if you're doing NaNoWriMo, you could just do something like completely crazy. Yeah. And do paranormal romance. I personally love the genre and I agree with you, Michelle. It's definitely in the low fantasy. It's as close to um, the world as we know it. But the, again, there's a spectrum, isn't there? So it's yeah. anywhere. But <clears throat> it, I think knowing that could take a lot of pressure off because I think a lot of people shy away from paranormal romance because they think, oh, gosh, I have to write all this brand new world building stuff. And that's just overwhelming. And it's like, no, you couldn't have it set in a co very contemporary setting. Just yeah. make sure that your mood and your setting and, and everything, like your environment, is ticking those boxes and a yeah. really good way my little tip for um finding out reader expectations i am obsessive i've never <laughs> never hidden this from anyone i read everyone's reviews in my in the genre i want to write in so i go in the top selling books and i read the reviews i read the bad reviews the good reviews and i find out what are readers wanting mm -hmm. what are they yeah. can't like you commonly will see themes they're not shy about it also if you go on to Facebook reader groups or TikTok or Instagram and you're looking up the genre you'll find readers saying what tropes they like what tropes they don't see enough of you know it, you have to be a little bit of a detective but it's out there and if you do the work it will massively pay off massively because I just released my released my pirate romance which pirate romance is like dead <laughs> um <clears throat> But I, I kind of marketed it as more like a fantasy rather than just, a, it's like a historical fantasy, the start of a series. And that helped a lot because I've ticked a lot of those reader expectations because I put the work in before. And that's helped me to release a book that perhaps isn't super trendy at the moment, but 
it kind of works because I'm able to slot it into the other genre, if that makes sense. I mean, look at look at um um oh what's his name? Michael Andale did a vampire in space. That was and that like really took off. And mm. and yet when he did that, it was like so unheard of, like what's <laughs> so random. I actually really like that idea. I haven't read it yet, but mm. so you no, can I... do your own twists. Yeah. Um, do we have a question? Is that what you were gonna say, Michelle? No, I was going to say that, like you said, for people who are intimidated about writing paranormal because of the world bu building, then mm. the lucky thing is you can just stay really close to the, you know, what everybody already knows or believes about werewolves, vampires, mm -hmm. angels, demons, ghosts, all that sort of stuff. Like you don't, you don't necessarily have to come up with all of it from scratch and then just focus on your plot and expect the reader to know what they want or but they already are imagining in their heads, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. And and sometimes less is more. So, you know, I, I we are not writing high fantasy. You do not need paragraphs and paragraphs of description about what the room looks like. Yeah. <laughs> or even, I mean, in Harry Potter, which is considered low fantasy and I guess paranormal, um, there's like a whole chapter I skip every time I get to it. And it's when Hagrid comes back after being away for a really long time and he tells Harry where he's been and to this day I don't know where he's been <laughs> because every time every time I'm always like nope I want to go back to Harry and like what's going on with him <laughs> yeah that's funny so yeah so do you guys have any final last words or are we Nope, good? I'm just ready to go scare the kindergartners in the pickup line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. please take a picture of that. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much to Victorine and Michelle for joining me. Thank you to you guys for watching. If you're catching up on the replay, let us know in the comments and give us a like. And if you're not already following us, please subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss out when we get when we're online and talking about yes. random stuff again and also we have a great community on facebook so if you're not in the writing gals come and find us we'd love to have you we talk all about writing publishing and marketing and uh yeah we just love to see you and until next week happy halloween you guys yes bye <laughs> bye, -bye. bye.